Okay, that is us live now. Are you there, Dominic? Yes, sir. Good, Good morning, John. Good morning. Well, I think we're coming up to uh, coming up to the top of the hour quite soon. Uh, I'm John Richardson. I work with uh, Dominic on, on, on a number of different projects, um, and we're going to produce this webinar together today. Uh, we've got about another minute or so. Lots of names coming up uh, that, that Dominic and I can see. I don't recognize a lot of them, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that you know, Dominic. Yeah. John, exciting. We have uh, people from New England and New York, New Jersey area. I have some Chicago friends and uh, associates. Uh, here's some people from the California, Colorado. I even have someone from uh, Rome, Italy right. area, Fraschetti to be exact. Right. All right. So uh, exciting to be here. Uh, and I'm, of course, in, in Ireland, so it's a very eclectic crowd that we've got. Yes. Uh, I've got a good example of how the Internet can pull over all of us together, an, an Irishman and an Italian-American. Yes, let's let's uh, let's make this technology work for us today. Exactly, an Irishman and an Italian American. That could in certain in certain quarters be seen as a recipe for trouble, but we will definitely not be causing any trouble today. We're going to get some. So Dominic's got some wonderful content uh, that I think can make a very big difference to your business. So I think we're pretty much ready to go now, Dominic. Um, so I'll, I shall hand over to you. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'm, uh, this is a great t to start this webinar off. How to finally get your snow business to work for you. This is providing better service to your clients. I say working less hours. It's freeing up that time, freeing up that precious time. So you're in the right place if your business is taking over your life. You're working all day managing your crews, you're estimating sales calls, you're out there physically working, measuring, and checking every single job. But also, you come back, a long, grueling day, coming back, payroll, accounts payable, scheduling, working, writing on these proposals. Now, right in the other room is your family and your social life. So it doesn't matter if you have an existing business making money now or you're barely breaking even. Perhaps you really want to just grow your company. We have something for you to help you today. So here's what you're going to learn by hanging around. We have three components every successful business has, the pyramid of success. Simple process to make more money from your existing resources, it's Know Thy Company. We're going to do three steps that create the most efficiency after the sales contract is signed, connecting thy company. And lastly, there is a simple th three-word process you must have in place. You will make sure your clients stay happy and they come back like clockworks every single year, satisfying the, your client. So the real problem, John, yep. the audience, the real problem we have, how do you find the time? Because there is one thing that we have to get revenues in our company, and that is getting more sales. So what is this real problem that we can't bring this in? Yeah. And I find the real problem is finding this time. We are stuck in the minutia of our company. We have this, this thing that we are doing every single thing, and when you do every single thing in your company, you find that you have very limited time to sell. So the real problem we have is, is getting out of this and selling more. Yeah. So a big promise to you today is to be able to get these tools in your hands and making sure that this thing starts getting more life into you, more time, more that you could, you could do whatever you want with this time. And more likely than not, you're going to have more time for sales. So my, uh, my big promise to you today is to get this, these tools in your hands. We are going to look at what these tools are. We are going to then put into the reason why they're so important. And then I'm going to help you, both John and I are going to help you implement them into your business. So let me introduce myself to you. My name is Dominic A. Chirella. I'm the dapper guy with the scarf. And uh, believe me, when you look John Richardson up, you're going to see another dapper man <laughs> in a scarf. Yeah. We are the Handsome Men in Scarf Alliance. That's so very much what it is. It's like, it's like a new Marvel film that will be out soon. 
Exactly, exactly. So I'm 35 years plus veteran of the landscape and in snow removal industry. I grew my business to 15 million within a 10 year span. I made every mistake in the book along the way. And I created a snow millionaire mastery intensive roadmap and in, uh, a, a, a virtual course. And this has worked in dozens of business owners just like you. Now, make sure you stay right to the end. Yeah, because what we're going to do is we're going we're to give you the PDF of all of these slides. And that may sound like something that maybe isn't all that use useful. But in these slides, the information that we're going to give you today, you're going to see all of the uh, a number of the forms that Dominic used to, in a net, when, it, when he was building his business to $15 million. So uh, you can directly take those and apply it in your own business. So make sure you stay right to the end so that we can get you uh, the details of how you can get that in front of you. Okay. So I'm also, we're going to give you a secret today. And this secret is what all of these successful companies give to their clients. Now, um, a little back about myself is way back in the day, uh, I was uh, studying to become an engineer. And uh, during those times, I was landscaping. I was in the high school times, during the summer, during the, the, my college time, during the summer, paying my way. Back in the day, you could pay for college. So I became an engineer, and I thought I was going to start. But you know, lo and behold, I had a calling. Instead of becoming a computer engineer, I had this calling. I love landscaping. I love being a snow cowboy out in the, in the winter. I really, truly love this stuff. The air, the clients, the people, the sun, the nature, the beautiful places we have. So I became a landscaper. And I have a little, a little, little a tidbit out here. Someone took a picture of me in the heyday. <laughs> and uh, OSHA, OSHA beware, of course. But notice the, the, the gear. Notice the six-pack, the, mm. the tools, all, all, that, all that protective gear from eyes to body. Okay? A little tiny body. bit like Freddie Mercury I'm just noticing there. Thank you, John. Thank you very much for that. So um, I became an engineer. I became a landscaper, and it, I joined a partnership in 1986. And from 1986 to 1996, we had a great company. Um, we we started out about five six hundred when I joined, and we moved it up in a ten year period to a seven fifty k. We had great service, absolutely great clients in this area, and we had great people working for us. And I tell you, I'm, I come from an Italian background, and we have a solution for everything, and that is to work harder. And when we have issues, we even work harder. So that was the solution to our company, but it started to, to come apart. It was a fatal flaw. flaw. There was only 24 hours in a day, and it started getting to be very chaotic. Because as we were growing and getting more people, more trucks, more equipment, more clients, time was running out. We could not find the time in the day, and it started becoming a nightmare. And we just couldn't figure out. We, were, we had that $1 million mark. It was that, this, that, really the, 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 uh, the, the, golden, the golden goose, if you will, John. It was one of those things where we saw that $1 million mark. We just couldn't figure out how to get there. You know, we're smart guys on top of it, but we just couldn't get there. So along comes one of the best things that happened to my life. Mm. In 1991, lo and behold, something beautiful happened to me, and I had triplet daughters. And uh, it was uh, a time where uh, I had to put my time into them. So I had to see things in a new way. I knew that, that I needed to start doing something in a way that, the business was working for me to free my time up, but also to be able to give my clients what they needed. So it was uh, grow my company, but make sure I do something in a new light. So we started out in this, this, this trek. Solution number one was getting consultants in. So we started hiring consultants. Um, you pick and choose. Some worked, some didn't, but they were the ones that helped us out and started moving us in this direction. And this was our number one solution, hiring consultants. Extremely expensive, but they did help us grow. 
So the, but the real problem was these, these uh, consultants didn't really work well together. They didn't play well together, even if they recommended themselves as. I have a, uh, one time I had a consultant was working with us and we were creating a work order um, project. We, we created this beautiful template for the production department so they could gather all the information quick and efficiently and consistently every time is. Now, another time, I had another consultant do an invoicing system. He was my financial man. So he put in this invoicing system, and we were putting this stuff so this way we could invoice our clients properly. Now, lo and behold, both of them are left the company, or they were, you know, coming because they weren't there on a full-time basis, as we know. The two systems didn't work together. I was dumbfounded. So this was the real problem of having consultants in your business. You had to control this this bidding. Now it seems like common sense that a work order system would work with an invoicing system. And when I asked them, um, a, a very uncommon, like or maybe it was common, mm. you didn't ask us to. So yeah. the real problem, yeah, the real problem at that time was uh, working with the consultants, but controlling it. I had to find it. So my mission in my life was to be the project manager, the system developer, the person that really put this thing together. So I had to manage this from a higher level. So it became an obsession to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And that was what my, my work was. Not only was I working in the business at that time, it was a dual process. I had to work on the business. And I had to be the one that really man in charge. No one, no one helps in that sense. You have to have a person that knows this and, and knows this bigger picture. So when you build a work order or you build an invoice pro project, you know they're going to work together down the line. So lo and behold, the million dollar barrier, we broke it and we smashed it and uh, kind of proud of ourselves. Yeah. So how did we do it? You know, how did we break this million dollar mark? Um, many, many things were part of this. There was the e-myth coaching and system. There was a, a vocational mastery course that uh, I took with, you know, for the company. And actually, uh, part of my team was part of this and also were coached. Um, Dale Carnegie coaching courses and management and leadership courses. Great books like Les McCowan, um, Predictable Success. Uh, David Allen, we had Dale and Allen uh, consultants come in to help us with time management. Countless, countless, countless consultants. And of course, they're dollar signs. Sure. And uh, I love reading. I love learning. I love teaching. So these business books were abound. And uh, excellent, excellent industry events. Uh, I mean, industrial events such as ALCA at the time to turn it to planet and SIMA, Snow and Ice Management Association, and these local associations. This is how we built our process. And the result, we not only smashed this million dollar mark, we ended up around that three million dollar mark. And we had to start all over again. Um, these systems and processes, there seems to be different barriers and different um, levels, different stepping stones that you had. But we had sites for five million, and we crashed the five million dollar barrier. And we crashed it so hard, we hit the eight million. And from the eight million, we had sites for this infamous these numbers. We were we love these numbers. We looked at that ten million, and we crashed that ten million dollar mark. We landed around the fifteen million dollar mark, and uh, it was a seven year stretch. We averaged about twelve million dollars in uh, sales and revenue with a twenty five cent. 25% net profit. Yeah, now this is a really cr critical place because as you know, Dominic, I mean, I do a lot of work in the hospitality industry, as you know, uh, and, and, and we have the same barriers within that in terms of each stage where you're trying to grow the business. But at the events and when people are talking about their businesses, most of the time what they do is they focus on the turnover. 25% net profit at 12 million. That's a business. There are lots of people doing many millions in turnover but actually losing money and I think it's really critical to realize that all of this work that you did, all of these coaches and consultants and reading was about recreating a business that worked but also produced that level of net profit. That, that, that to me is, 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 is the great, you know, is the great thing about what you managed to do and I think that's the critical thing that, that people need to realize uh, in terms of their own businesses. It has to be about the profit. 
Uh, the the thing we look at, John, and, and the audience is uh, a healthy company. And uh, the first 10 years, yeah, it was healthy. We were making money, but it was almost like that little Pac-Man was right behind you, chum, 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 chopping behind us. Yes. And uh, the company wasn't as healthy as we thought it was. When we look back and uh, look at the health of our company, uh, we had profits. Uh, it's just they were – we look at a healthy company. And, then, you know, sometimes, you know, we go to these industry events, too, is, and a lot of us men and women, we puff our chests out and uh, talk about how many millions we make. Um, but I found that to me, for me, wasn't really knowing where I was and knowing where we, we went to. It isn't about the, uh, your sales, even though a lot of people will puff their chests out to do that. It really is about the health of the company. And uh, that's what we really look at. Yeah. We really look at that. So that, very, very important. So that was the result. Um, I ended up taking a two-year sabbatical. I knew at my time at my pinnacle, um, uh, my partner and I, uh, I suggested the company was running, uh, the systems were running the company, and the people were running the, the systems. I went for a two-year sabbatical, and uh, it was kind of interesting during those two years, and did many, many things, and uh, quite comical at times, because I really say there's the sabbatical man, but yes, at the uh, ripe old age, at the uh, ripe young age, and I knew it was young, it wasn't old, uh, 53, and uh, it, was, it was a great time. Uh, did move to Italy a few times and uh, spent some time there uh, uh, with my family, with, uh, with friends there. I also, uh, at times, two summers were that my, my children, uh, my three daughters were internships, New York City, New Jersey. John, this has been, those areas are incredibly difficult to get in and out. Sure. And uh, taught them how to drive and the, the, the bridges and the tunnels and the, the rail systems. And now they... Uh, a few years later, their uh, old hat with it. So that was a, it was fun. Uh, I went back even to FDU, Fairleigh Dickinson University. I went to uh, and got my master's degree. That was more of a funsy kind of thing, is believe me. When you after uh, 30 years out in the industry, you come back as a little seasoned. Your 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 teachers are sometimes the same age, and you know you kind of banter with them more. You know. So that was great. I kept studying, kept learning. Let's say you, you were obsessed with continuing to try and, 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 and understand this, this whole business. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm a builder. I, yeah. I love to study. I love to learn. But what, it, what I love to do with that is to teach, whether, as you see, with my children, my family. And the same thing happened. Uh, many companies would call me up, you know, the friends say, hey, Dom, I know that you're on a sabbatical. Um, come into my place. And um, uh, it was, uh, I, I would say, the first two years of sabbatical, I've done quite a few companies. And, um, but uh, it was more something that now I started applying these lessons that I learned. And this is when I started thinking about uh, what it was that made uh, me successful with my partner, but also helping the, the, my friends and associates out there do the same thing. And... Um, I started tweaking and adjusted this at the time. So, uh, you know, at that two, two year sabbatical, it kept, you know, it started working to about a dozen companies. And it was just, uh, started getting a little overwhelming at times. But, you know, most of the time it was uh, a two year, it was really rest and relaxation and, and time to reflect, study, thinking, tweaking, and building. And uh, it started coming down to is how did I put these building blocks together? You know, how? How did we become so successful? And as I was doing this two-year sabbatical, I also went to companies, and it was apparent to me when they had some of these components and when they did not. And this, during those two years is when I started building these, putting these building blocks together and coming up with things that what helped, what didn't, what made success, and what didn't. And we came upon, I came upon this myself and started writing this down and started building this roadmap. And here's what we did. And this is the start, here's the first tool that we are going to introduce to the audience. And this is called the pyramid of success. And this pyramid of success is when you see when you come into companies, a lot of us, John, and I know in your industry the same thing is you do go visit yeah. other places, other clients, other companies. You're in these industry events and we visit. 
And when you start walking through these halls, you find there's a pyramid of success. Maybe the words that I'm going to suggest and the words that I use are different, but not the concepts. Exactly. So this is the pyramid of success. This is what one finds in the successful companies. This is the building blocks that I found. And I put it together, and I call it the pyramid of success. And this pyramid of success is, uh, has three components. The start of the components is leadership. What is leadership? Uh, what is, when you walk in, what is the vision of a company? This is leadership. And you go into these companies, and leadership you find a written strategic objective. It's not thrown up on a wall. You see these things. You go into uh, Ben and Jerry's and you'll see what is our strategic objective and you see that. But um, I like that. I, I don't know. You know, you, it, it seems like they have it at this Ben and Jerry. But this is what you see in the most amazing, successful companies. You find a vision. You find a written strategic objective. It may be on the wall, but it's, in, it, it's, it's intrinsic in these companies. Yes. But you also find a culture, you find values, and you find leader or leaders that have this and mentor this being. They mentor themselves, but they also mentor the company. So the first part of the pyramid you find is a vision, a culture and value system that permeates successful companies. That's the first part. The second part you find is this network of people. They call it many things, I call it network. Now, network of people are employees, subcontractors, your professionals, your lawyers, your accountants, your um, vendors, and even your clients. These people are what satisfies and helps the, the strategic objective get to the vision in the future. These are the people that touch this. So you have your organizational charts, you have your positions, and most importantly in this area, in this part of the pyramid, you have career development. I love this section. I do look back in the time that I was in my successful company, I was one of the professors in, the, in Ultimate University. And this is where learning went on, mentoring went on studying and helping with systems and processes, even helping learning the positions, but also helping in the career of the, of the men and women that were in this company. That was what made our company successful. So this was the network of people. Finally, we have systems. This is, as you could see on the bottom, the foundation of this pyramid is systems. Systems for each of the department and systems for connecting these departments. I call it interdepartmental systems. They're systems, they're templates, and they're tools. Systems run the company. And this network of people run these systems. And these systems look for the strategic objective to put that vision in place. That is the pyramid of success. These are the three elements. When you walk in, you will feel you will see, you will taste this, not only from the owners, the leaders, the managers, but pretty much every single person that you touch, every hall you walk down, every machine you touch, you'll see these three pyramids of success. Now, I've taken out of the systems, I've taken out four areas, and these are the systems, the cornerstones of growth. John and... Uh, and the uh, men and women in the audience, you will find that I, um, everybody divides up differently, but I divide a company up into four different main areas. This way I could focus on the systems and then focus on the templates and the education. This way we have systems in those departments and then they're connected. So the first uh, cornerstone you find, I divide it up, I put it into marketing and sales. Marketing is the awareness to your clients, awareness to people. Awareness to your network and sales are the systems and processes that you have to be able to get your revenue. And these are the tools to help you. The next we have accounting and finances, accounts payable, accounts receivable, payroll, 
financial reporting, you know, the health of your company, finding out how they are. The next would be human resources, the hiring, the firing, the, 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 the actual university, which is the career development, the benefits. This is the human resource department. Last but not least, I put down production and the services that you provide for your clients. These are the four cornerstones of growth. And this is the actual seven parts of the, uh, of the companies. The things that make the final piece of the puzzle, if you will, this is what these things, this is what we put together, the final piece. And with these seven parts, I've helped um, many, many companies build through a roadmap. The final piece of the puzzle is a roadmap. And it's called the Snow Millionaire Mastery Intensive. But it's based on this roadmap in these seven areas, these seven parts of successful companies. And that was the final piece of the puzzle. So now we had all the pieces. So Jim Rohn's put it perfectly. Success is neither magical nor mysterious. It's success is the natural consequences of consistently applying the basic fundamentals. It's not magical. Yeah. You think it is. In the first 10 years of my partnership, I thought it was mysterious. I'm watching these men and women really thinking, how is it so magical? How did they do it? And then the 10 years of, of bleeding, <laughs> yeah. putting these things together, but putting these pieces of the puzzle together, then coming out into a, a sabbatical to really find out what I did and then tweaking it, I really found out it's really consistently applying the basic fundamentals. And that's... That is how these things work. So let's study these consequences. Well, yeah, I mean, they, 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 what, what fascinates me, and that's why I love that Jim Rohn quote, because if you look at your kind of, if you look at that journey through, you know, the, the early days, making a bit of money, and, you know, and, and, and although fascinatingly from my perspective, you know, with that sort of computer engineer background, which is why you kept coming back to try and find these solutions. But it's, a, it's been almost like this, this endless quest to try and find out to dig deep, dig deep and work in and find out what works and then what has worked and then trying to view, view it all very much from a from a very systematic perspective so when you and I sat down and first first looked at this what we wanted to try and do was was then see if we could test the theory a bit more clearly so we, we created this this consequences chart so if you if you consider uh, along the top uh, you have a business that has uh, all of these places all of these pieces of the jigsaw in place. They have their leadership right. They've got this solid network. They've got their systems in place. They've got their production processes completely nailed so they've got happy customers. They've got their sales processes in place. They've got a good accounting um, and they've got their people happy and developing along. And that means they've got a successful business. But if then we start to move down this chart and, and you notice that we remove one from each one of these, you know, these, if this is effectively um, another seven businesses below, the red block is, that, is the part that's missing from that business. And then at the end, we see the consequence of not having that in place. So what we've done is we've, we've looked at businesses, we've looked at the businesses out there that are missing these, and this is what we see. If you don't have your leadership in place, there's no direction to the business. If you don't have this solid network, you end up with this stifled growth because you don't have the partners working with you. You don't have the subcontractors working with you. You don't have the vendors working with you. You don't have your people all working together. So ultimately, little pits of the business won't work. They'll, they'll, they'll sort of fall apart. They'll be rough around the edges, and you won't grow the way that you should. And we know that if you have systems in the business, well, you've just got chaos. We all know that. But if you don't have your production processes right, well, then what you end up with is you, you end up with a couple of things. But primarily, you end up with unhappy customers. And if you end up with unhappy customers, then the poor sales guys have to be out every year reselling and selling again, perhaps also promising that they'll be better this year. And if those sales guys aren't there, if they can't do that, well, then you just get low sales full stop. So you see how all of these pieces come together into this jigsaw.
Now, if you don't have your accounting processes right, we all, you know, I'm sure we've all had businesses along these lines where sometimes if you don't get your accounting processes right, if you don't get the invoices paid, you end up with cash flow problems. I lost a business in my late 20s from cash flow problems, even though it was profitable. Or perhaps people are continually within this industry. If you don't get your accounts right, if you don't get your invoicing correct, then you end up doing a lot of work sometimes that you don't get paid for, and then you hit your profits that way. And finally, if you don't have this human resource team around you, if you don't have these people growing with you, if you don't have the trust in the people that you've got working for you, then you end up with, you know, uh, this pain of, you know, worrying about what's going on at the weekend, worrying about what's happening when you're away on holiday, just constantly dealing with people, getting frustrated with the people that, who work for you because you feel that they should know how to do something, where actually you should be taking the responsibility and have that in place. So this kind of overall jigsaw it fits to this business perfectly. And what Dominic's then ultimately done is, is, is filled in all of these gaps so that there is a process, there's a roadmap for every part of that seven steps. So I think we're going to go to try and dig into one of those now, aren't we, Dominic? Uh, have a, have yes, a look at production um, to try and demonstrate that. Um, even in the audience here, is, this is an excellent map. John, this is a, you, you created such a, a nice uh, way of looking at the way businesses are, what you have and what you don't. And you could actually pull this map when you, uh, at, you, you wait to the very end of this, uh, um, our webinar here and you'll be able to get some of this information yeah. or get most of this information but this grid alone is you just put this thing and you know print it out put it on your desk and say okay guys let's take a look at each one of these areas exactly and, and, and see what I don't have and what I do have and uh, in my consultancy business for hospitality I have a version of this it's different obviously because that's a different arena but what, what when I go in to work with a business that's that's where I start that's just where I start so being able to look at this, you can become your own consultant for your own business by taking this document and thinking, sitting down with your key people and thinking, okay, well, where is the gap in our business? And then you start to give yourself power to build it back up again. Exactly. So this is an excellent, excellent map to be able to uh, figure out what you have and what you don't. Yeah. So let's, get, let's start digging into this. And um, let's take one of the modules here. Okay. Uh, I am going to go into the production area and we're gonna this is the second tool that we're going to look at and we're gonna start drilling down these are production systems and templates and uh, as you can look across the boards here you can see the schedule boards and route boards and pre-season boards and post-season boards capacity boards and then you have your even your post pre and post events now we're gonna look into one area we're gonna look at to know thy capacity. This is what's going to happen. With resources you have already, we are going to start drilling down in this area. And we're going to look at capacity boards. Now, capacity. John, thank you for this image. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if I should be afraid or I, I, should, I should smile. Okay? It, I feel, I feel like a little brave. I'm aware of that. <laughs> What yes, we were I trying to like do, though, was, was illustrate the concept that actually this is what most businesses are like. It's the way that we estimate, you know, everybody estimates the capacity in their business the same way that the rest of us estimate, you know, how deep is a well. We peer over the edge and have no idea and make a guess. Now, most people in this industry, that's sort of the way they have their business runs. They just go out and they sell and they think it'll be great and we'll get as much money in and we we'll get as many new customers. But that because they don't know the capacity of what the business can do, it's just like staring down the well, and that's what we're trying to stop here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I just have to say, I feel a little like a brave heart in this uh, capacity area here. So I'm not sure who you are and who you look like of oh, the capacity bunch, but <laughs> or the uh, brave heart bunch. But exactly, knowing your capacity of your company. Now, I, I know that if, if you know you're an owner and you have a handle on it, but as you get bigger, uh, you 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 it's, you're having too much in your brain. And when you get this down on paper, and this is the tool to get this down on paper, to get this down that you know what's going on. Uh, I, I, I remember way back when I was doing snow, uh, snow providing one season, and this was in the, the first 10 years of my life, and one of my best clients, my top clients gave me a lot of work, said, Dominic, I can't find the people to do a bunch of jobs. I have the prices for you and I have the, the jobs for you. 
I need to have I need to get it now this was in November okay November and this is not the time to take this yeah but now I'm full of piss and vinegar I know my team and me and my partner work 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 let's get it in let's bring it in and you know this was a little bit over my head at the time I didn't know about capacity even though it sounded common again simple tools common sense it wasn't too common to me at the moment so what happened was they uh, dropped the mall on me which is about a million square feet um, they dropped about two or three uh, Home Depots which were uh, um, places where you buy all these uh, the build you know building places and construction places over here and these are pretty big hefties uh, some grocery stores some chains some some pharmacies they call CVS's and they dropped them in my lap I took them I have to tell you pain ensued I wasn't satisfying clients I couldn't satisfy them I didn't have the capacity to but I didn't know it at the time uh, my uh, employees were coming apart at the seams machines were breaking down accidents so I had unhappy clients unhappy employees and um, maybe I had some more sales I wasn't even sure if whether I even had you know profits I, I, I would believe so but I, I don't really know if I did or not so it was a very painful experience so here's what we're gonna do is when I found the reasons that I didn't know the capacity here is five critical capacity boards the first one are truck boards truck boards are what trucks and large equipment that you have uh, payloaders that kind of thing is what are your capacities in the trucks and equipment area the next board subcontractors some of us have subcontractors one form or another but here's a you need to know who your subcontractors are and what are their resources do they, do they give you one truck, two truck, three trucks? Do they give you just a large piece of equipment? This is a board that you put that information on. Employee boards. What are your employees? You know, are they drivers? What, what do they do? You know, who they are? How many are they are? Material boards. How much material? Sand, salt, bags, you know, mixed material. How much do you have where it is? And last but not least, when you start selling, you have your site boards. Where does the information go when you have us when you sell your contracts this is the boards so we're gonna look into two boards right now we're gonna look at the truck boards and we're gonna look at employee boards here's the first board um, I happen to be like the control central feel to me I'm a old touch and feel kind of guy in the, you know so I had a large room in my in my first company a real large room I bought two I bought these four by eight foot boards these white where you could write things on and put tape on there and make make beautiful um, boards and I could put four on one side three on the other side and you know three in the front of it so you can imagine the size you know sitting in the middle having these boards but I had these boards this is the first board let's look at the truck and equipment capacity boards these may be an aha moment and may find it yourself saying these are simple boards they are using them being consistent as Jim Rohn said and using these fundamentals means all the things in the book so how many trucks do you have write them down put down the plow type put down the plow size put down the sander type and then start listing some of the large equipment you have and some of the small equipment this one board could tell you the capacity of your company and uh, how this board is used well now you ha you know what is if you for an example I went into one company that had five trucks in the in our industry just relatively speaking an average is about one acre plowed per hour now the more complicated it's more the less complicated it's less but this is a good tool one acre per one hour so when you put your routes together and you put a six hour route you know that you have five trucks you know you have six hour routes and then you have one hour per done you have about 30 hours which you have about 30 acres that's the power of this board now sales is going to know how much they're selling they're gonna keep tabs of this of course when you start putting them onto the site board you're gonna keep a tab of it also so any given moment I could walk into this room John and you know ladies and gentlemen you could actually see 
how much is being sold, where your capacity is, and when you're going to start getting into trouble. You could imagine if I brought this jobs in and I had this board and I shoved up a mall and I shoved up a bunch of other sites, they'll look at me like I'm from Mars. Yeah. Dom, what are you doing? You know, I like to think of you sitting in there like a Bond villain with all of these boards around you. <laughs> yeah. Everything well, under you control, know, though. No, you're, you're correct. Is um, you know, um, yeah, I'm full of piss and vinegar, but when <laughs> I, if I brought this in on the board, they'd say, Dom, you're full of shit. You yeah. know, and that's a little different, you know. But uh, this board really does help out with, with your capacity. The next board is your, there's another one, your employee capacity board. So let's take a peek, peek at this, another simple board. You look at this and you say, well, my employees, list them. Which ones are drivers? And even which ones of the drivers are plowers? There's a difference. And shovelers, how many shovelers do you have? Operators of your large equipment. So you have an employee, they could be a driver, they, they, maybe they're, they're just an operator. So now when you start building your route boards, you can see how this is connected. So now you're just pulling these things off of it. When you start making your routes, when you start putting those routes together, you have your trucks and you have your equipment. You just pull them right off these boards and start plugging them in. Now you're going to see what you can do and what you can't do. You're going to know your capacity. That's the beauty of knowing your capacity. Know thy capacity of your company. These are just two boards of, of five boards that I find to be most critical in your company. And again, I like the, the feely, the touch, the feel of a command center. I like to come in the room and feel the power surging through my body. Some of the newer folk like um, electronic boards. They like it on Excel sheets. They like to be mobile. And I have to tell you, later on, I like to like it myself because I could pull it up on my smartphone and uh, do that. Yeah. And uh, they're all linked, John. So that is uh, capacity boards. Know thy capacity. Five boards that will be able to get you to the, the level of um, just knowing where you are and where you stand. Okay, that's the first tool. Let's take a look at the next tool. Let's take a look at some linking tools. I told you there was four cornerstones of growth, four departments, production, sales, accounting, and HR. But I also explained in the systems that you have to connect these things. You have to be connected. So let's take a peek in this little bit in the middle here and connect these things from sales and production, let's look at how they're connected. So here are the systems in the sales area. You can see going right across the top, you have five great systems and templates in that department. But what comes out of this department is a contract packet. And this is where you have a support system, an interdepartmental system. And you have a bunch of them. We're going to go over three of them. We're going to go over parameter sheets, preseason work orders, and postseason work orders. We are going to connect thy company. And these systems, these templates will do exactly that. We're going to connect sales to production and also sales to accounting. And let's take these things right now and go into it. Now here is a parameter sheet. So if I go back and look at these parameter sheets, this, we're going to look at just two areas, your production and your accounting. So going into the production parameter sheets, you're going to see uh, one sheet, one piece of paper that goes from sales that goes into production. You're going to see something that the production needs. What does production need to go into their site board at the time before they get really all the information? Client name. Client site, big difference of where the site is. Some information of the client hours, what type of business it is. Um, you know, this is only a portion of this sheet, but this look you can look at it. What you know, lots, front, back, side, uh, descriptions. Do we do them? Do we don't do them? Sidewalks. Um, you will find things like uh, square footage. You will find things of uh, lot square footage. So this is something that you're going to put in. It's going to connect the sales of what they sold, signed contract, to what production needs to know to start moving forward, start putting resources to it. 
another parameter sheet, accounting. Well, accounting needs different things. They need the billing name and address, not the site. You know, I have a story that uh, tells me there was a, my men were call, calling me, and they were, in, I'm from the uh, New England area, John, and yeah. uh, Connecticut is uh, right next to New York, and uh, they're calling me from Yonkers, and they're going, Dominic, we cannot find the site. So I said, where are you? You know, I have some maps over here. I could call, I go up and Google and find it. Well, lo and behold, they're in Yonkers, New York. Well, this was a Connecticut site. Lo and behold, there's a big difference between the billing address, Yonkers, and the actually site address, Westport. Yeah. So it, this is one of those things I told you, the many mistakes I met, I made. So two hours of, for three people driving into the, into, the, into the Yonkers and two hours back, you know, you're talking about a, maybe four to five hours times three is 15 hours and wear and tear of a truck. There's where you make the pain. There's where the mistakes come in. But you learn. So, you know, in an accounting area, getting back to this uh, sheet, one piece of item, this helps now get your stuff together in the beginning of the year, before the season starts. So invoicing parameters, um, what property, the services, do you have required documents? You know, is it, is it a uh, seasonal contract, so you need to know how much, how to charge them, um, what to charge them, what extra work is, the numbers. This gives now accounting a way to start putting their information together pre-season to be able to start when the, when the storm starts. This connects sales to accounting. You'd probably attach a work order to that so to connect production to sales, but we won't be going into that right now. Here's uh, going back to um, the second one, preseason work order. You're gonna, we're going to go into seeing preseason work orders again, connecting the company, the interdepartmental systems. Here is one just little example of a preseason work order. You're going to have preseason work orders for production, preseason work orders for sales, preseason work orders for accounting. This is just one item, preseason for production. Preseason, I keep on telling you that, that word just rings through it. Maybe it's a little even starting to get annoying and starting to annoy me myself here. <laughs> I have to say that you want to give a work order on a board so your production prepares the site. It prepares the site for you know, taking pictures, taking pictures of all the areas, taking pictures of the damage area. These are checklists. So this way now, it's a tool for production to do the work, but no, they're going to do all the work they, they're, going, they're supposed to. And the same thing with sales. We're going to get a preseason work order for sales. And we're going to do the things necessary for the sales. And sales does things like, uh, you know, talking to the client, finding out what the ins and outs of it, you know, introducing yourself, introducing your production team. You'd have that, maybe sometimes you do it at the same time. So here's my crew, you introduce them. Different things for different um, uh, departments. You even have, which is strange, a preseason work order for, for accounting. Because you want accounting to set up the client. You want to set them up the, the file system. You want to set up the you know the, the electronic file systems on on your computer. You also if you most of us most of us use a software like QuickBooks, so you want to set them up in there ready for the season. So these are the three areas that you have, and um, uh, you, you'd be surprised of what what you come up with uh, when you when you actually do this and uh, work with. Uh, uh, there's a, uh, a time that I went to, we were doing some work at a grocery place and we actually went there to work with a client. So I went, with, I went there at the beginning of the season because this was a, a eight of them. We, we had a uh, stop and shop uh, at the grocery stores and uh, we went there. And lo and behold, we met with the client. So the production had their work order and their own staking the property, taking photos and we told them what we're doing, introduced them to the, to the manager and uh, she... Uh, we're walking around with us, I want this, I want that, and here's the sales, here's the person you'll be talking to, any, any problems, any issues. Uh, the dispatcher was there, and then here's the owner. So we went around, and uh, what happened was we found that uh, she goes, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. Lo and behold, we said, hey, wait a second. 
the, our contract doesn't say that. So uh, we happen to have the contract with us. We brought it with us. We, we gave it to her. And she read it because it was a national contract. We were doing this on a national level, and she was a regional in Connecticut. So she says, this doesn't do this. The nice thing about it was she solved the problem for us. She went down and saw the extra work area. So she helped us out. We helped her out. So we, she got what she wanted within the scope of the contract. But that would never have happened if I didn't have a preseason work order for the sales department to work with the client. That was the beauty of, this, of, of having preseason work orders, all before the season started. So we're going to look at one more area. We're going to look at the postseason work order. We're going to look at the production, the accounting, and sales for postseason. Here's one of the one of the areas we're going to look at is a postseason work order. This is for production again, and it's the reverse. At the end of the season, you attach the photos to this work order. You remove the stakes out of the properties. You're going to probably fix the areas, but then you're going to assess any of the damage. Maybe you're going to need some sign-off papers, that kind of thing is. But again, a checklist. Just going down the line. You have to understand, John, is that um, having a checklist, it makes the person do the work and be more observant. Yeah. Know what's going on and be consistent each and every time. I'm not trying to make robots out of these men and women. I'm trying to give them a tool that when they go there, you're going to find that, oh, geez, I forgot the photos, <laughs> you know, or, you know, I forgot to get the sign-off sheet, you know, I did, you know, that kind of stuff is. You find that happens, you know, and I don't know if it's the fault of the worker, it's not, he's not paying attention or she's not paying attention, but this is the checkoff, boom, I took, I took the photos with me, boom, I took the stakes off, boom, I did, I had the soil with me and the peat, and I'd done some work and some, uh, Fix the damage area. That's the beauty of this work order. So these are the three systems, the three subsystems, the three interdepartmental systems that connects thy company. I have one little other area, and this is the sales. Here is a postseason work order for the sales department. And they're going to go to the site. But what is the goal of sales? What is the goal? And we know, John, yeah. the audience, ladies and gentlemen, there's, there's one big goal is to sell snow, sign contracts. So they have a work order for the end of the season, too. And what this does is that they make a work order to go talk to the client to see how the season was. Now, of course, we know we have during season work that we're doing, so we know that we rocked their world, we satisfied them. So here's a, something that is a little tidbit as part of that sales work order, that postseason work order, is to bring the contract with you. I have sold in my company, and also some of the companies that do this now, that I go into right now, is I have averaged from all these companies about 30% sign contracts in April for the season, the next season. Could you imagine having, before you start the season, 30% capacity you have already? That's the beauty of these interdepartmental systems and templates. So that is a, a little tidbit. That's probably one of the more exciting parts of having this thing that we call... Uh, what I love about that is that that shows how good systems drive sales and that's the critical part of this as far as I'm concerned you know it's, it's um, you know if, if you can make it easy for the sales guy at the end it, you just make the whole business easy really well that's exactly what it is when you have a work order that says uh, bring your sales contract with you if it's the end of, if at the end of a period and in accounting or in the, even in sales department you have a you know he's gonna go grab it yeah or she's gonna go grab it and say please uh, you produce this before I even get there because they're reading their work order. Exactly. So, exactly. so they don't go there empty-handed with nothing but a pencil in their hand. They go with, uh, with the contract. Or more to the point, go there uh, even sometimes with not just a pencil in the hand, but but you know a bunch of excuses for why what hasn't been done or some confrontation because of a different expectation. 
uh, it becomes a much you know it becomes a very easy sell and it becomes a, a pleasant experience right right so that's what they want to do is you know and I, I don't want to even bring back I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little Italian here and uh, I'm sure we saw this thing is uh, I can remember one of the Corleone brothers that said about he didn't want his, his brother that you know to be at this place before he he uh, was at that restaurant with only you know with something else in his hand so yes. we don't yes. want that no you don't you don't <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, so that is the uh, that's a second tool that is to connect thy company, and uh, we're going to go take one more module here, and this is going to be going back into the production department. We're going to take the three words for lifetime customers: we satisfy customers, satisfy thy client, satisfy thy customer. There are three words, and they start with P, D. P. And again, this is going to be pre, during, and post. These are three words for lifetime customers. Now these three words for lifetime customers, pre, during, and post, I spoke to you a little while ago, the, first, the second tool about pre, during, and post season. But what we're going to talk about in the production department is going to be pre, during, and post snow event. What do we do before a snow event, what do we do in each and every event? Where do we go? What do we do? What happens before this event? What happens during the event? What are the things that we do in each of the departments? What are your job functions? So that is an area that we're going to have for three words of life of lifetime customers. So let's drill down quickly into this area. You see this. Now, again, the tools, the systems in the just the production department. We're going to look at preseason, and we're going to look at some postseason. So here are some preseason procedures. So you start this ball rolling. What do you do 48 hours before the event? And you can see the descriptions in here. What does the dispatcher do? You know, what does the operation do? What does accounting do? So you have different things. This is an education procedure here, but we have lists for. Uh, people in the um, in the production, people in the sales, people in the accounting. So you have a huge storm coming over here. Is you're going to have a meeting 48 hours even before, and you're going to discuss in the production department. Okay, are your employees ready? Are your subcontractors ready? What's the problem? What are the issues? Who's in? Who's out? Then we're going to turn it over to the operations. Okay, operations. Uh, what trucks are up? What trucks are down? Are you ready for the storm? This is going to be a three-day three, three day storm. Are you ready for repairs? Do you have any breakdown trucks? When are you going to be repairing? When are you going to be doing this? Timing, accounting. Do we have the work orders? Do we have the route sheets made already? So when you have these meetings in preseason, you find yourself prepared. It doesn't go like clockwork, but certainly you have a, a game plan. Certainly you're ready for this. This, this, this war that you're going to have out in the snow. And I have to tell you something, you know, maybe there's going to be a small storm, a two-inch or three-inch puppy, but maybe you're going to have a snowstorm like Nemo that we had in this area that I had 27 inches in the Connecticut area. We even had the, a half an hour drive from here was 47 inches of snow. Mm -hmm. that's, almost, that's four feet. That, 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 that's, you better be prepared for that. So this is what preseason procedures do. And uh, having lists for each one of these things, again, you bring in the list and you go right down it. Production, go down your list. Operations, go down your list. You know, so someone's in control of this, one of the managers that's in control of this has all these tools in their hand. Now everybody's ready. Now the, cl the custom, the client is ready. Even in the client area, sales department, go talk to your client. Tell them what we're doing, how we're prepared. Tell her that we are, you know, she may not like some of the things that are going on because if, it, if it's a crazy storm, you know, she may not like that we're not going to get there this time or that time, but we're going to be able to satisfy her needs. Yes. That's the beauty of pre-storm procedures. Okay, we also have some uh, post-storms, um, um, po post-storm procedures also. What happens after the storm? You know, accidents, repairs, paperwork. What does production do? What does sales do? What does the office do? They have their list and they have their information. 
because you want it to go like clockworks after the storm, after this event. You want this to happen. You want, you know, accounting wants, uh, a, you know, a list, and they want to know that they got all of the work orders, so they can start invoicing. You know, HR wants accident reports if anybody got hurt. They want these reports so they can get on to the, you know, doing what they have to do to help that person out. You know, operation wants to know what they need to repair. They want to know if something's broken. And production, of course, the dispatcher wants to know all the work was done. And sales, if there's a problem, wants to be able to get back to start talking to these clients and saying, look, here's what happened, here's how we did it, and uh, we, 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 we fixed it. You can't be perfect, but we can be good at what we do yeah. and, and solve their issues. They know that we made a mistake. It's how you solve it that, that matters. Not that you start running for cover. That's what postseason procedures do. So under this system, clients are satisfied. Under this snow millionaire mastering intensive, when you have all these seven areas, you have satisfied clients. Your clients are confident, and clients and your company's confident. Your company and client actually know what happened. They know what's going on. The systems run the company while your team is now in thinking mode looking for the way to satisfy the client. You're even invoicing quickly or quicker. So you got paid quicker. You build the work that is done. Okay, so clients know what they're looking for. Always look after them before, during, and after. And all season, pre and post, but also each event. This is a systematic approach that works on autopilot. People are working these systems. Even if, oh my God, the, your owner is not there. Employees are absent. Or you have multiple storms in the forecast. You have, even if you have temporary employees like subcontractors, you know what's going on pre, during, and post. You're, you're sub, you, this is the temporary employees, subcontractors. So what's the result? Just like this boomerang, clients keep coming back to a company that knows what's going on that's successful. Exactly. A, a, comp, a, a client knows that you could, it's pre-season what you're doing with them. They're comfortable. So is your company. You have that sense. The client has that sense. The company has that sense. It permeates. So that's the reason they come back, because you're servicing them. You're making mistakes because that, st that stuff happens, but you're also solving it. And even at the end of the season, now you're, you're, you're together. So that's the result of these tools that you find in the Snow Millionaire Intensive. So I promised you a secret. And this secret is a big secret. <laughs> okay, so what is the secret of these successful companies? Quite a simple it's secret, secret, actually. It's called p peace of mind. Clients have peace of mind. Even the company has peace of mind knowing that we have a game plan. But most importantly, clients have peace of mind. That's the secret of a successful company, and that's the secret of clients coming back to you and become part of your network to satisfy your strategic objective. Yeah, I think when you explained that to me, when you said that you sat everybody down and made sure that everybody in the organization, you know, which was reasonably a reasonable size at that stage, understood and grasped that actually the outcome is that all of the clients have the peace of mind. They're not worrying about, um, you know, the, 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 anything to do with having you as, 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 as the person looking after their snow business. Uh, I think I think that becomes very powerful because it changes the mentality of the staff very strongly to realize that's what the goal is here. If our goal is for client peace of mind, then at the end of the year, if we provided that for them, well, then they will come back. So I think that's, that, that, that bit fascinates me. I think it's very powerful, simple, but very powerful. Yes, yes, exactly. So let's, let's remember something. This is not just theory. This is what helped my last company go from 715 to the 15 million, and this is exactly the same principles if you have a small operation or you have already have seven figures. This model has been proven outside many, many businesses that I have worked with over the last four years. So what's this all about? It's finally getting your business to work for you. Finally seeing the income return for 
you know, all the time and the money you invest in this in your company. Spending more time with your family, friends, and long forgotten passions. Feeling proud again of your business. I am sure this is why you showed up. Uh, I, you, and I'm not sure if some of you didn't know because maybe you're just fed up with your business and what it provides for you. Maybe it may be because you want to start a snow business but, and you want to avoid the mistakes. You want to look for the solutions to how to grow your snow business. Profess, you know, maybe you're doing okay, but maybe you want more freedom, money, and time, and that's what we all want. So I hope you really get this one thing. I really found the secret of how to run these businesses. Going on my journey, my sabbatical, and discover, discovering the secret utterly changed my life. This is the roadmap. It's something you could do. It's a step-by-step -step process. You can, in a very short period of time, be in the same situation. Uh, so the obvious question is, how do I apply all these great information to my life and business? You have a choice. You could do it one way. You could take it and do it the slow way. You could do trial and error in some of what I taught you today, or you could just do it quickly using my full seven-step process. John, Albert Einstein. There he is. Everything in life should be as simple as possible, but not simpler. Which is exactly how you've structured this course, isn't it? Yes. They're simple, common sense, but boy, oh boy, they make you efficient and consistent, and they make you profitable. Yeah. So the Soul Millionaire Mastery is, it's designed to give you solution, pretty much everything you need to create a business like I did and the ones that I go into. It's absolutely the fastest way to get you from where you are now and to a business that has vastly less hassle. You will get definitely more time and profit, guaranteed. It's the treasure map, John, isn't it? We're always after a treasure map. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, this is the you know, it, it, it is this final piece of the jigsaw that we talk about. You know, it, it is the treasure map. It's these pieces that you've put together. It's the final formula. You know, it's it's every cliche we can think of. It's even the holy grail. You know, it's it, it's hard. It, it, but 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 you know, this is you know, it's what you needed in your business to begin with. Um, John, you, you, John, I love the I love the well, and I love the holy grail. Yeah. <laughs> We're always after a holy grail. So, yeah. so yes, uh, you, you're right on. So what does it do? It keeps us from jumping off the cliff yeah. and figure on the way down what we should be doing. Which, which is why nearly everybody starts up a business and in many cases just continues to run the business. It stops yeah, I, that dead. I, I don't know. If, I, I, I don't know. I've known you for a while. Yes, it is. It's what we do. We yeah. jump. So this stops this. Yeah. This really does stop this. Okay. And uh, so why is it the why? You know, uh, why, why are we doing this, John, and for our audience? Well, this is the interesting thing, because your why for, um, for, for your business, for your snow business, was always you knew that if you could create client peace of mind, then the business would work. And your why for this now, this new business that you've created, and this course, is to remove the struggle from people running their businesses. And I think that's very powerful. Yes, exactly. So you're gonna, they're going to ask me. I know they're right now telling me this. Dominic, what exactly is this? What exactly is it, Dominic? Tell me. <laughs> it's a full seven-step process to create it broken down every detail. Nothing is left out. It, it's delivered online through videos, PDF, workbooks, spreadsheets, Word documents, audio files. Everything is downloadable, and everything is produced as a simple, simple manner. This is not classroom. Yes. This is not just theory, and it gets you completely hand-holding, mentoring, guidance from me along the way. So module one, we're going to go through the seven modules very quickly here. Leadership, module one is all about stepping back and looking at your business objectively now. Take you by the hand, I'm going to walk you through exactly what you want in your business for your future and how to create that. We're going to show you exactly how I did it but also how to create this for your consulting clients. Do not under, uh, underestimate this leadership module because this is the module that you have the vision and the guidance to get you there to transform your life in every way that matters to you. So the module tool to network. 
You can't do this alone. You must get people around you. You know that, I know that, but you must have them engaged and brought into your vision. Create, we create a structure and control that you not, where you may have chaos. You, I'll show you how to get your people working seamlessly with organizational charts, position agreements, and also the career development. So you're not worried about who's doing what, when, where, or how, again. I'll show you exactly how to help these people grow in your company and help you grow your company. Module three, the systems. Remember, systems run the company and people run the systems. Here we'll create the core outline of how to produce this in your company. Exact models, exact templates that I even use in my one-on-one -on -one very, very successful companies. It's much easier than you think when you have a road map. So when you start plugging this in, you don't get this, it does, this doesn't work with that. You quickly start feeling some control. It starts coming back into your business. System module four. Now we're going to look at the sales systems. Now we're cooking. Here's where we're going to create actual control for you in the sales department. This is, again, the exact models and templates on the one-on-one -on -one multi-million dollar clients. Now the crown jewel here is an estimating program. This is going to help you calculate not only per inch, but per season, each and every time. So when you get more salespeople, they're actually doing the same thing. Consistency. Five, production management. We're going to show you exactly how to deliver now what you promised. We're going to dig deep in now the capacity boards that we went over, but we're going to dig deeper there. We also talk about whiteboards. We're going to talk about pulling it all together. This is going to be where the exact customers get exactly what they're expected and promise. Module six, accounting and finance. This is the final piece with your operational jigsaw. I'm going to show you how to make it work from, from the where the work orders flow seamlessly so you get this invoicing right out. This means you're going to get paid. Clients are going to be happy. Well, sometimes they're not as happy with getting the bill, but this is what well, I think anyway. This is my world. Anyway. Nobody likes paying anybody. <laughs> Seventh, we're going to talk in human resources. We do get into this. We need to take the pressure off the owner. We need employee management. We need, we need career development, which is ideal. We need vendor management, every form that you're going to need for these three areas and the documents to help you break this million dollars and shatter these million dollar barriers. Really get more profit in the beginning, but if you feel like you're going to it's just going to be a natural occurrence. So how much will this cost me? You asked me. Wow, Dom, this is absolutely fantastic. How much is it going to cost me now? Well, I got to tell you, when I go into the big companies, I do three-month projects with this model. And we do a project, and I go in there, but I go in there for $35,000 for these three months. If they want me for a single day, it's a $3,500 pop. But, but I'm working one-on-one. -on -one and I only work with three or four companies throughout the year, and I am booked for the next two or three years. Exactly two years right now. I have some this year and next year already booked. So this information has cost me over $100,000. I'm telling you, John, you know you worked with me. You, you helped me produce these things, these virtual courses. You are right there on the firing line. You know how many hours it took us. Well, I do indeed. I mean, and we, 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 we worked it out the other day, how much money and time and money you'd spent to develop this information, and it is a fortune. Right. So I recently put this into a company last year in the snow season, triple in their snow department in this one season. So it will cost you a tiny fraction using our technologies. Let's use the technology that we have in our place. We have three different options. We have the silver, the gold, and the platinum. Let's look at the silver. Full access to these seven modules. You start off with a half an hour on the phone with me so we start zeroing in on what we have to do. You get complete access to a private membership area so this is where we get to some Q&A of other people. We have a weekly live session whether it's education or Q&A for the three months. Full recording of these sessions so if you miss them yeah. you could start for $1,097 and you could pay in three months or you could pay up front and get over 15% discount for 2,997,000. Less than one day with me or the consultants you work with, you're going to get three months of consultant work 
of mentoring work and a roadmap with the, with the silver package. The gold package, you get everything in the silver, but instead of having a half an hour, you get an hour with me so we can del delve even deeper of what this happens and we can put a plan together. We're going to work for six months. We're going to work three months with the silver package, but then within the season, we're going to do is see how these things work or how they don't work and how to fix them. You have full access to me now and help you critique these in these next the three months, the next of the, all these six months. Now this is going to be for $9.97 for five months. You could pay over a five month period or you could pay $39.97 up front. This is almost a day's worth of work, but we're going to work six months together. Platinum, everything in gold and in silver. One hour quick start, but now you're going to have now the next, those three months, one hour for six times. We're going to talk now to really get the issues down. So it's private. We're going to talk virtually. You could weekly access of email to me now with the six months. So this way we don't, uh, we can get information that you may have a quick question or two and you can get it, dash it off to me. I, can, I completely handhold you for your success. Completely mentoring. I guide you. Now this is $9.97 for six months. Pay up front is under $5,000. This is by far an, just an incredible value. Yeah, that's the one to take. Much really. more. If, if you want guaranteed results, you know, that, that, that's exceptional value in my eyes. Exactly. So let's get on our journey with other business owners. We're going to be in a private online forum. So you're going to hear the issues of other people. They're, everybody has the same issues. But, this, but I, I guarantee you, you will not have your local competitor. <laughs> Yes. Being virtual, it's probably going to be in all of North America that we're going to find people here. Is but I have limited um, people going to be in my in my course. I limit them, but I also limit the competitors in your area. So when you get that, you're not going to have someone uh, down the lane that's going to hit you. During the, the six months or during the three months, and then in the six months, we have some guest experts. So we could even have during these lectures, you even have more details in areas that are even more. Um, detailed than I'm going to be. To sum it up, if you finally want freedom and you pro finally, finally want a, a, a company with proper money for your business, you're going to work less hours. There's no better system. This is exactly what I needed when I started. I would have saved me hundreds of thousands of dollars and thousands of hours of pain. You get all the modules in a format that can easily apply. No tech nightmares. We resolve the issues too when they happen because they will happen. Yeah. But you get my personal hand holding and mentoring and support. But it's not for everybody. I told you it's limited space, especially for the platinum. I don't have I have a limited amount and I want to make sure that they get personal. They get the personal mentoring that they need. You must be prepared to come to work. You have to apply these proven processes. These, you, have to, you have to do this work. But I have to tell you something. When you start moaning and start complaining, I'm going to immediately refund your money, hands down. Uh, this is a proven step-by-step. -step. I am not a miracle worker for your company, but this does help. If you're ready, you can start for as little as $9.97. And I guarantee it, after the first month, you do not like what I'm talking about. You do not believe it's not going to work for you. Guaranteed, no questions asked. I don't care what the reason is. You get your 997 back. So if you're ready to get immediate access to the first three module and the outline of the next three modules, you can schedule a phone call with me right now, and we're going to get going radically transform your business. I have the course starting in as little as two weeks away. Right now, go to this page www.snowmillionairemasteries.com forward slash go. Click the button that says let me in. <laughs> Please. You're going to get immediate access. You're going to find that me and John are on the other end. So click the link below or type in www.snowmillionairemastery.com forward slash go. Uh, and we will find we're going to be on the other side of the... Yeah, you should have the button there below you. But, but it's www.snowmillionairemastery.com forward slash go. 
and we will see you there. So finally get your small business together for you. I, I look forward, John looks forward to really seeing you on the other side. We do. Let's start doing this together. We are completely excited to be working with you over the next six months. So thank you very much uh, from Dominic H. Rolla, 7 to 7 Best, and the uh, very, very stylish and handsome John Richardson from and, and just Belfast, outside Belfast Ireland. in Northern Ireland. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. I hope that was some benefit to you. And then we'll, oh, I forgot we have another link for the, um, for the PDF, but we'll send that out in an email. We'll send that in an email. Okay.